everybody. In today's walk, we want to talk about different types of scaling scenarios that we see a lot of at our gym. We released a blog a few weeks ago about tips for scaling, and some of you guys had follow-up questions about that, and we wanted to give you some real-life examples of what we're talking about. So we're going to be talking about Nancy, which is one of CrossFit's uh, famous workouts. The workout is five rounds. You can 15 overhead squats at 95 for the guys, 65 for the girls, and then you do a 400 meter run. This is, we pick the overhead squat because it's a fairly complex movement. A lot of people when they first start crossfitting have a hard time with overhead squats uh, based on a lot of factors, uh, a lot of them being mobility. So we wanted to give you guys some real life feedback on what we would suggest based on what you're feeling or why you need to scale that workout. The first scenario could be a lack of mobility or range of motion, uh, also known as flexibility. So when it comes time to overhead squatting, we hear a lot of the times that people have a hard time just getting into that overhead locked out position. So keeping that armpits facing forward, upper back muscles pinched together, lots of times we have issues with that based on a lot of that internal rotation. A lot of us uh, sit on that computer a little bit too much all day um, or spend a lot of time seated. So when we start with a movement like that, it could be very challenging. So the first thing that I would suggest is if you have a lack of range of motion, our goal should be to address that. You want to actually work on it, practice your range of motion. So instead of going 95 pounds on my overhead squat, if I'm new to overhead squatting, I'm going to start with a piece of PVC, maybe a 15 pound trainer bar, just to see what that feels like. Make sure I'm in the right position. So when I get locked out overhead, I want to make sure I'm not rounding in with my shoulders and upper back, but I want to pull those shoulders back and down, keeping that nice line from my hands to my shoulders to my hips to my feet while I'm going through this. Now, this is going to be a very challenging position if I have mobility issues to come down into my overhead squat. So what I see sometimes happen is we roll onto the toes maybe, uh, we start kind of round, the shoulders are rounding, we're on the toes and we're really struggling. So we're putting our body in a compromised position. So what I would recommend is get your position down first. Shoulders are back and down, shoulder blades pinched together, armpits facing forward, elbows locked out. And then instead of squatting, which could add a whole bunch of extra issues with our range of motion and mobility, I'm just going to go for a lunge. Back knee touches the ground. I'm trying to keep that rib cage locked in the whole time, putting extra focus on making sure I'm feeling this in between the shoulder blades. Putting more time underneath my bar, even though it's only 15 pounds, or if you use a regular bar, 35, 45 pounds, even you're using a much lesser weight, you're getting time in the correct positions. So that would be my first scale. For someone that's newer or not comfortable with overhead squats yet, stick to the workout, but go at a really light weight. Be very deliberate about where your body is positional. Second scenario is you're just not feeling it that day. Sometimes people might want to use this one as an excuse, but oftentimes we come to the gym, we're kind of tired, maybe we already worked out three days in a row, our bodies are a little bit fatigued after our warm up, we're just not feeling that energy that we normally feel before a workout. We're, maybe you have a little bit of uh, achiness, muscle soreness, uh, you didn't sleep so well, maybe you didn't eat the best the day before, the day of. That is a very common scenario that we see. Lots of times in the past, I've made this mistake and I'd be like, yeah, I'm not feeling it today. I don't feel the best. I don't have the energy. But last time I did 95 pounds on this workout, so I'm just going to do 95 pounds because I know I can. That's not necessarily the right approach. If I'm not feeling it that day, if getting under my bar feels uncomfortable, it doesn't feel right, I am going to scale the weight down for sure. If I'm really not feeling it that day, I might even bring my reps down a little bit. Or instead of doing five rounds of Nancy, I might just do three rounds of Nancy at a nice easy pace. So pay attention. This is very important. Not feeling it is more of an intuitive thing. Use your intuition. If you're warming up and you just don't feel right after your warm up, something's a little bit off, change your movements. Change your rep schemes perhaps. If I'm not feeling the overhead squat even with a lighter weight, I might even just switch that up to just air squats or goblet squats with a kettlebell. All of those are viable options. 
The final scenario we're going to talk about today is if you're dealing with an injury. So let's say you overdid it on pull-ups a couple days ago, your shoulder's really sore, your lat's really tight, something in there just doesn't feel right, you're getting into your overhead squat position, you're feeling pain, anytime you're feeling pain, do not ignore that. Just switch the movement altogether. Ideally, what I would suggest is if you're feeling pain in your shoulders, I would try to do a movement that's going to be more like a physio style movement for the shoulder. So for example, a bent over row would be a fantastic option because if my shoulders are hurting, by strengthening the muscles in between the shoulder blades, I'm gonna pull back that posture and I'm actually gonna help myself recover potentially or re recuperate from whatever injury it is I have in my shoulder. I know sometimes when you come in here, you might not be sure what kind of movements would be able to help. Talk to your coach about that. Another example, let's say you're dealing with a knee injury and overhead squatting irritates it and running doesn't feel the best. First off, I would switch from running to either rowing or to biking. Lower impact, lower intensity, you're not pounding that pavement. That is definitely the first step I would take if you're dealing with that knee injury. The other thing that I would think about is in my squat, I might actually switch that up to a deadlift. So instead of doing an overhead squat, if you're getting into a deadlift, you're gonna start working on more of the posterior chain, more hamstrings and glutes, as opposed to in a squat where you're bringing forward, involving those quads, and potentially adding some stress to the knee in doing so. Find a movement when you're scaling that can actually help you recover from that energy. Strengthen whatever part of your body maybe could have contributed to having that injury in the first place. Keep these three scenarios in mind, guys. It doesn't have to just be with overhead squats. It doesn't have to just be with Nancy. But remember, if you have a lack of mobility or range of motion, you can't do a movement, work on that mobility in the workout. If you aren't feeling it that day, listen to your intuition, listen to yourself. You gotta listen to the little voice inside your head. It's usually right, change it. And finally, if you're dealing with injury, no matter what, the movements that you do in the gym should not cause you pain. So if you're feeling pain, you should switch the movement up, try to pick another movement that will actually heal the area that could be damaged in the first place. See you around, guys.